As the fourth largest metropolitan area in the state of Ohio, with an estimated population of one million, Dayton, Ohio has long been associated with aviation. Orville and Wilbur Wright having constructed and demonstrated the first powered flight. But in the heart of the city for the past 25 years, a group of dedicated volunteers has committed their time, energy, and compassion to serving the needs of the underserved in the community. This is the story of Good Neighbor House. Got involved in Good Neighbor House as part of my ministry at the Kettering Adventist Church where I was pastor. The first, and we called it community services, we didn't call it Dorcas, we called it community services in a little brown house that the hospital kindly let us use. And it was treacherous because the hallway and the stairway up to the third level was so narrow and hauling stuff there was a challenge. They gave us also the garages right on that property. And we had a van that we went around to the community and we would pick up and deliver furniture. I remember going all over Dayton, picking up beds and settees and chairs and bringing them there. They'd work on them and then taking them out and delivering. We were the only community service entity that was doing that. We realized that we'd outgrown the little brown house. After 18 years, the faith-based nonprofit relocated to their current 12,000 square foot state-of-the-art facility where volunteers continue to provide the neighborly care that Good Neighbor House has been known for. Good Neighbor House has been here for I don't know how many years. So I started doing it on Mondays and slowly, just uh, whenever I'm here, I enjoy coming down and working with whatever. Though Good Neighbor House began in 1994 by providing food, clothing, and household items to neighbors in need, they have expanded their mission by not only providing goods, but teaching how to make better choices. I started coming to the Good Neighbor House uh, first in 2016. And I came for the pantry at first, and then I noticed that they had classes. They had them different classes that you could attend and they were interesting so I started that. In 1996 came the expansion to offer dental, medical and optometry services. When we started the, uh, the, the medical work and things like that we, we staffed almost everything, the dental eye, everything with all volunteers. The doctors all volunteered, they, they brought their staff members and they volunteered. We had volunteer people who work with, you know, the paperwork stuff and everything else. And then over the years, <clears throat> they received a number of different grants uh, that have, you know, kind of propelled it forward. And now, you know, many of the people that work are, are paid staff and paid uh, physicians and doctors and people because of the volume of what we're doing now. We can't just staff it with volunteers. Couldn't be sustained that way anymore. As demand has increased through the years, God has faithfully supplied well-equipped workers in amazing ways, leaving them well aware that it was truly the Lord's provision. When I came to Good Neighbor House, um, we were kind of in the, in the midst of a transition because the previous ex executive director had, had passed away unexpectedly and uh, they were looking to fill that position. And then uh, Marcia Ayler, she's the assistant uh, director and she kind of is more involved in the thrift store and the food pantry. My background was not in nonprofit, and um, we, we were always connected, my brother and I, to Good Neighbor House. My mother was one of our founding mothers. And uh, always when we would clean out a closet, no matter where we were in the world, it's if you get anything, you give it to Good Neighbor House. And that's just kind of the way we were um, kind of brought up to being um, involved with Good Neighbor House. My mom was one of our volunteers here, um, as well as one of our founding mothers. She worked in our clothing department for many years. And a position became available here, and she said, you should apply as the assistant director. And I thought, there's no way. I mean, there, I don't have a social work background. I'm not a pastoral staff member. Um, and ironically enough, I got the job, and God kind of put me where I needed to be as far as um, learning how to pray with clients, learning how to understand some of the people's uh, temperaments when they come in to visit Good Neighbor House. Good neighbors don't let neighbors go without food or clothing. The food pantry at Good Neighbor House is well stocked with a variety of healthy food where families are allowed to choose items specific to their dietary needs, while the adjacent thrift store offers new and gently used clothing at affordable prices. These basic needs are at the heart of Jesus' words when he said, I was naked and you clothed me, I was hungry and you fed me. 
But I've never actually worked in an organization where they have a thrift store, a, a food pantry and wellness classes, and then they have a medical, dental and eye clinic. And, uh, and of course, it was, I, I found out that it's really uh, Adventist Community Services, is that's how it started. And to me, in my mind, as I think of Adventist Community Services, as a little, a young child, I, I remember in our church, there was an old house beside the church, and there were some old ladies folding just some few pair of clothes and, and a few cans of food. And to me, that's what Adventist Community Services was. And when I came here, I was blown away by the, the involvement of, of the area churches and even the community, how they're involved in supporting the ministry that we have here. Father, I pray that today we will make a decision to make a difference in the life of someone. We've always had an open door policy at Good Neighbor House. Uh, you know, if, if people can buy into the mission of Good Neighbor House, then we'd love to have you be part of the team. And, uh, you know, you don't have to be a Seventh-day Adventist to do that. You don't even have to be a Christian to do that. I mean, you know, we try to grab people from all over the place who just love people and care about people, and we put them to work here in uh, being able to serve and do that. And it's been a phenomenal model, and it's been an outstanding uh, result that, that has come out of all of that. A wise man once said, wherever you turn, you can find someone who needs you. Even if it is a little thing, do something for which there's no pay but the privilege of doing it. Remember, you don't live in the world all of your own. I uh, started volunteering at the Good Neighbor House uh, in August of 2013. That's when I started. Now, what continues to motivate me, or motivate me here at Good Neighbor House? Jesus. I'm the hand and the feet that he talks about in his word. He's trained me to be here at such a time as this, and every skill set that he has trained me has been needed here at Good Neighbor House. He has touched my heart in a way that when I meet clients, some will just come to me and say, would you have prayer with me? I said, sure. And then others will join in. Or I could just be singing a song here at my desk and someone may pick up and hear me singing. But truly, the service of the Lord is why I'm here. I am here for no other reason but to be a servant of the Lord and to go ye therefore and do whatever his will is. And his will for me right now is to be here at such a time as this, when this, what he's trained me to do is so much needed. I love it, I love it. Well, my connection occurred, my wife, for 42 years was a nurse at Kettering Hospital. She was in charge of the behavioral health department, the adult behavioral health department. And uh, so she, when she retired, she came down here to volunteer. And then she said, hey, maybe that's a good idea. That's something you might get interested in. So I followed her down one day and together we volunteered for about a year and a half. About a year and a half after that, she passed away. I'm still working here as a volunteer in honoring her. Predominantly, I've been helping out back in the pantry. What makes this organization so unique is not only do they have food for those that, that need food, this is just an incredible organization with all kinds of services that just run the gamut from A to Z. Good Neighbor House relies on volunteers willing to reflect Christ's compassion, unselfish caring, patience, and just plain loving one another. We get a lot of volunteers at Good Neighbor House who may not be people that are able or willing to come into our building and work at our zip code. Instead, they work at their zip code, and then they bring their time and talents to us. And it's been absolutely amazing. We have a couple who work together. He buys the yarn and his wife makes us beautiful hats, scarves, and um, sometimes even they'll bring in gloves or what have you for our clientele. Um, and it's absolutely amazing to see these beautiful products going out the door um, and them using their talent. That's a talent. And to say, hey, I may not be able to come down there physically or drive down to Good Neighbor House, but I'm going to spend some time um, every day 
or a couple times a week just dedicating myself to uh, making things that you can give to your clients is just amazing. Going beyond the basic needs of food and clothing, Good Neighbor House is meeting a need in the area of medical services as well. Good Neighbor House offers a wide range of medical, vision, and dental services at affordable prices to those who would otherwise be unable to afford them, thus improving the lives of thousands of their neighbors. Malin was born um, August 14th, and um, at her two-week appointment, the doctor noticed her lip tie and that she probably has a tongue tie. All three of her boys were lip-tied and tongue-tied. So tonight you're getting ready to do a procedure. It's called uh, phrenectomy or phrenotomy, treating these tight things that we all have these parts. Sometimes they're too tight to allow us to use our mouths properly. What we're seeing tonight are infants that can't move their tongue to feed. So we cut through it, give them some freedom, and hopefully allow them to eat better, later speak better, later swallow better. So it's a chain reaction. So you you do this procedure how many times uh, here at Good Neighbor? I come here one night a month to take care of them. I come after my day at work in my own office. So it's my time to come help. Awesome, that's great. Well, thank you for helping and we're gonna go to the procedure right now. Great. Good. <laughs> Lack of access to quality health care services is a growing problem that many economically challenged neighbors face every day. With medical costs rising, insurance plans diminishing, and hardworking people having trouble obtaining the help they need, the Good Neighbor House stands as a living example of loving God and loving each other. Both paid and volunteer practitioners provide quality care for individuals and families who are not eligible to receive it from other sources. So the procedure is finished. How do you feel it went? It went very well. Uh, and, and so the parents were in the room. They were totally okay. You know, we need, we know this is needed. We took care of it. They were the cheerleaders. My assistants helped support the child while I did the work. It took 15, 20 seconds. The laser that I use seals the nerve ending, so they really don't have much feeling. And as soon as we're finished, we put them to the breast, and in the, this case, it, everything was pretty fine right away. Right. The child has some learning to do. Sure. Those muscles that are anchored have never moved, so now they got to learn to move. Awesome. Mother Nature takes over. God right. is so cool how He put us together. Right. But the most important goal of the people behind Good Neighbor House is providing spiritual guidance that will lead to a richer, fuller life of health, wellness, and spiritual fulfillment. Showing love to people in need the same way as Jesus Christ did is their ultimate goal. In short, the mission of Good Neighbor House is empowering healthier communities by fostering the physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness of their neighbors and His will for me right now is to be here at such a time as this, when what He's trained me to do is so much needed. I love it. I love it.